In this video, we will discuss a significant chapter in India's diplomatic history, the Gujral Doctrine. It was a bold, innovative foreign policy approach aimed at fostering better relationships with India's neighbors. But what exactly was this doctrine and why was it so important? This doctrine is named after I.K. Gujral, the 12th Prime Minister of India, who served from 1997 to 1998. But even before becoming Prime Minister, Gujral was instrumental in shaping India's foreign policy as the Minister of External Affairs in 1996. The Gujral Doctrine revolved around five key principles, all of which emphasized non-reciprocal generosity towards India's smaller neighbors, in hopes of creating a more peaceful and cooperative South Asian region. The five key principles of the doctrine are Number 1. No South Asian country should allow its territory to be used against the interest of another South Asian country. Number 2. India will not ask for reciprocity but will give and accommodate what it can in good faith. Number 3. The con no country should interfere in the internal affairs of another. Number 4. All South Asian countries must respect each other's territorial integrity and sovereignty. And the last number five, they should settle all their disputes through peaceful bilateral negotiations. So the idea behind this doctrine was simple, India being the largest and the most powerful country in South Asia should take the first step in ensuring stability and friendship with its smaller neighbors, even if it meant making more concessions than it received. One of the most notable applications of this doctrine was in India's relationship with Bangladesh. In 1996, India and Bangladesh signed the Ganges Water Sharing Treaty, ensuring equitable sharing of the waters, diverse waters, which had been a major point of contention for decades. Bangladesh greatly benefited from the agreement and India, true to the spirit of this doctrine, did not demand anything in return. This move helped build trust and goodwill between the two countries. Next example is of Nepal. So Nepal, a close neighbor, also saw the positive effects of this doctrine. Gujral believed that India should not impose any restrictions on Nepal's external relationships, even though India had considerable influence in Nepal's politics and economic matters. In 1997, under this doctrine, India waived the security clause of the 1950 Indo-Nepal Treaty of Peace and Friendship, which was a significant step towards addressing Nepal's concerns about its sovereignty and independence. Next example is of Sri Lanka. India's relationship with Sri Lanka was delicate, especially following the controversial Indian peacekeeping force mission in the late 1980s. The Gujal Doctrine aimed to rebuild trust between the two nations. India made efforts to not interfere in Sri Lanka's con internal conflict between the government and the Tamil insurgents, respecting the principle of non-interference in the domestic affairs of it, and this hands-off approach helped restore some balance to the Indo-Sri Lankan relations. However, this doctrine faced significant limitations in the case of Pakistan. While Gujral was committed to fostering peaceful relations, the history of conflict between India and Pakistan, particularly over Kashmir, made it difficult for the doctrine to achieve lasting success here. India offered numerous goodwill gestures, including unilateral concessions, but Pakistan's response was often lukewarm, largely due to its strategic interests and military focus. So this doctrine, though short-lived, left a lasting impact on India's diplomatic approach particularly with its smaller neighbors. It showed that India could use its position of strength to act generously and build goodwill, rather than demanding immediate reciprocity. This doctrine was also a lesson in pragmatism. While it worked well with some countries, it highlighted the complexities of regional diplomacy, especially in dealing with nations like Pakistan, where historical grievances run deep. So in conclusion, the doctrine was a vision for a more peaceful, cooperative South Asia, one where India's leadership role would be defined not by domination, but by magnanimity and diplomacy. Though the doctrine has evolved over the years, its core principles still resonate in India's current foreign policy. 
so this is it about this video and thank you so much for watching